uh, that's placed in the Word of God. And you can flip over one page to the next book, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Oh, it's placed there. I'm going to read two passages of Scripture this morning. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. The Bible says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Many of you believe Jesus is coming. Yeah. Many of you believe He's coming soon. Yeah. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. Don't you do let that sink in this morning. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. First Timothy chapter four and verse one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, openly, hiding nothing, wanting you to know that in the latter time, how many of you believe we're in the latter time? Amen. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Pray with you. Heavenly Father, we love you this morning and we honor you today. We're thankful for the privilege and the opportunity, Lord, to be able to be in your house today and to worship you freely. Lord, we're thankful for what Jesus done on the cross of Calvary. Yes. The one who loved us and gave his life for us and made provision for us on that cross. Lord, I ask today that our hearts be turned toward You. That our hearts be open and receptive. Our ears be open that we might hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Lord, help us all today, Lord God, to desire You in a greater way as we never had before. Lord, grant us today a hunger and a desire like we've never had before to seek Your face. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 May we see you. We live in an age where people's feelings where their desire, where their emotions override what the Bible says. Yeah, yeah. They don't care if you can back it up with the Word of God or not. They're not following Jesus. They're following and serving themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the day and the age that we live in today. The sad part is it's in the church. <coughs> a little while this morning on someone I don't know if I've ever preached maybe once or twice in all the years in ministry I've referred to him several times but I've titled the message this morning what can we learn from Judas I'm talking about Judas Iscariot Judas Iscariot was a follower of Jesus and a preacher of the gospel. Did you know that? But there was a double-mindedness about him and in the end he abandoned the faith. 
faith that he once professed. Bible said that in the last days there's going to be those that are going to, that are going to depart from the faith. The scriptures also tell us that before Jesus comes, there's going to be a great falling away. That falling away is going to take place in the church. Amen. Not only is there going to be a great falling away, but there's also going to be a time of revival like we've never seen before. And, and, and I know that you're probably sitting there, Pastor, how can people be falling away and there be revival all at the same time? It's people in the church that are going to fall away from their faith. Amen. Come on, somebody. Well, where's the revival going to come in? Well, those outside the church are going to come into the church. Those that are in the church, many of them, some of them, the Bible said, are going to fall away. There will be those, the Bible says, there will be those that, that will mock the Lord in the last day. All right. Oh, preacher, I've been hearing that all my life. I've been hearing Jesus is coming all my life. And many are going to get to the point where they believe that they don't that they don't believe what they used to believe anymore. And many are going to fall away. Well, I tell you, if you look around today in this world that we're living in, you look around in our nation today, and we see some stuff. Amen. So I want to talk about four things quickly this morning if I can. Number one, we're going to be looking at Judas this morning. Judas is scary. Number one, the first thing that I want to look at is the commitment he made. Uh -huh. Judas made a commitment to Jesus and there's no reason to think that he was anything but sincere in his faith. Like the rest of the disciples, he left everything to follow the Lord. Mm -hmm. Judas was actively involved in ministry, and he was given remarkable spiritual gifts. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, it said that Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure all diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Yeah. Now this is what Luke tells us. Jesus called all 12 of them together, Judas included. He gave them power and authority over the demon to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Yeah. Yeah. Judas Iscariot was a gospel preacher. He was given the gift of healing and he exercised authority over demons. Active involvement in ministry is a good and wonderful thing, but it is not in itself a guarantee of spiritual life. It's not in itself a guarantee of spiritual health, and it's not even a guarantee of spiritual maturity. In today's age, people make commitments to their families, they make commitments to their employer. They make commitments to their church. And they even make commitments to the Lord. And they don't think twice about betrayal when it comes to serving themselves. Oh, I'm, I'm committed to my family until a better looking woman comes along. I'm committed to my, to my family unless a, a better looking man with a better job comes along. Uh -huh. oh, we're committed as long as it doesn't interfere with what we want. Amen. We're committed to our employer. We're committed to our job as long as something doesn't come up uh -huh. that we would rather do than go to work. And a lot of people today are committed long enough to, to draw enough money to go buy them some booze and drugs. And, and then they're not committed to that person anymore, their employer anymore, until they need another fix. Uh -huh. 
And we're, we're committed to the church as long as it doesn't interfere with something that I want to do. And we're committed to the Lord until it interferes with something that I don't want to give up. Hmm. People today serve themselves. We become our own God. Come on. You ever, you ever wonder how the Bible could make the statement that there would be a falling away before Jesus returned? And how the Spirit could expressly speak that in the latter days, People will turn away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll accept doctrines, devils, turn away from the truth. How can people do that when you make yourself your own God? Mm -hmm. You'll do anything. You're capable of anything. <laughs> and I wonder, I wonder today how many of us are truly following the Lord with all our hearts. And all of our son. I wonder today how many of us are truly committed. We know many today aren't committed to their families. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We know they're not committed to their employer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're not committed to the church. Uh -huh. And they're not committed to the Lord. Uh -huh. If it was, the house would be full this morning. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We live, in, we live in an age where people call themselves Christians, but there's no Christian fruit hanging from the tree. Amen. 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 And then that brings us to the second thing that I want to reveal about Jews. I want to talk about the opportunity that he was given. Uh huh. You see, Judas walked with Jesus for three years. He saw the greatest life ever lived up close and personal. You can't have a better model of faith than Jesus or a better environment for forming faith than Judas had in walking with the Savior. He witnessed up close the miracle of Jesus Christ. When He turned the water into wine, Judas was there. When Jesus fed the 5,000, Judas was there. Uh -huh. When He called the storm, Judas was there. Uh -huh. When He delivered the legion, Judas was there. Uh -huh. When Jesus walked on water, Judas was there. Uh -huh. When He healed blind Bartimaeus, Judas was there. Uh -huh. When He healed the woman with an issue of blood, Judas was there. Uh -huh. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, Judas was there. Uh -huh. Amen. You can't have better evidence for faith than Judas had. Uh -huh. He heard all the teachings of Jesus along with his preaching of the Sermon on the Mount. So he knew that there was a narrow road that leads to life and a broad one that leads to destruction. It wasn't like he didn't know. It wasn't like he didn't know the truth because he had the truth with him. It wasn't like he was kept in the dark about anything because he wasn't kept in the dark. You can't be kept in the dark and walk with the light. Come on, somebody. He heard the warning that Jesus spoke to the Pharisee and the story that he told of the rich man and Lazarus. So he knew there was a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. Yeah. Yeah. And we look at Judas, we look at the life of Judas, and we wonder how in the world could he walk with Christ and do what he did? Yeah. Oh. And we look around in the churches today and at people who call themselves Christians. They, 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 they're supposed to know the Word of God. Yeah. And so much, so much stuff is taking place in the, in the church. And you wonder, what are they reading? 
Are they listening to anything that the preacher said? Are they listening to the sermons that he preaches? Because uh -huh. right. <clears throat> somebody, for, for, for there to be a fall in the way, somebody's not listening. Man. It's not the hearers of the word that's going to get to heaven. It's the doers of God's word that's going to make it to heaven. Amen. Jesus said, he that, he that hears the word and doesn't do it, it's like someone who built his house on the sand. Amen. He doesn't have any foundation under him. Amen. The, the winds come and, 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 and the rains fall and the storms come and, 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 and when they come, Jesus said, the destruction of that house is going to be great because he's not founded on the Word of God. They're hearers, but they're not doers. But he who hears the Word and does the Word, his house will stand. Amen. When those same winds blow and those same storms come and the same rain falls. Judas heard the parable of the prodigal son. So he knew that God is always ready to welcome and forgive those who have wasted themselves away in the many sins of this whole world. He knew that God was ready. He knew that God was able. And He knew that God was willing to forgive. Amen. So many times we get, we get bound up in our pride. And, and we, we allow pride to keep us from coming to an altar. We allow pride to keep us from, from, from saying to the Lord, I messed up. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Uh -huh. <coughs> we get so wrapped up in our pride that we won't allow ourselves to go to our brother or our sister in Christ whom we have offended. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and, and the, only, the only two commandments that God has given us in the New Testament is love God Because if we love God and we love people, everything else will fall into place. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And we'll be pleasing in the Lord's eyes. Amen. Because we'll always do the right thing toward the Lord and we'll always do the right thing toward others. Amen. Amen. So he heard the parable of the prodigal son. He knew that God is always ready to welcome and always ready to forgive. Anyone who had fallen flat on their face, anyone who had gotten entangled in the sin of this whole world, with his own eyes, Judas saw the clearest evidence. With his own ears, he heard the finest teaching. With his own feet, he followed the greatest example. And yet this man still betrayed Jesus. Jeremiah 17 and 9, the Bible says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can do it? The human heart is beyond understanding, and there's something incomprehensible about a person who abandons the faith they once possessed. It's hard to understand how a young person raised by godly parents in the context of a healthy church taught the truth of Scripture from an early age and grounded in the doctrine but yet can turn and give up on Jesus. Yes, yes. And we see it today. We see it happening today. We see our children falling away. Falling away from the house of God, falling away from following the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm just going to have to be honest with you this morning. Sometimes it's our own fault because we've not set the right example. Yeah. 
we taught our kids. We taught our kids by example. It's okay to be at the church if you want to go to the lake. Hello? Amen. Or whatever it is that you like to do. And we, we put all of these things ahead of God and then we wonder why our kids aren't serving the Lord. Come on, somebody. Amen. Judah's story contained an important lesson for us this morning. An important lesson, lesson for pastors, for parents, for leaders in the church, and friends who grieve over someone they love who has abandoned the faith because it's not always our fault. It's not always something that we've done. Many times we ask ourselves, where did we go wrong? What more could we have done? Did we fail in our teaching? Did we fail in our example? But Judas teaches us that even the best example sometimes, the finest teaching, and the ultimate environment for incubating faith cannot in and of themselves change the human heart. Jesus said to Nicodemus, except a man be born again. He cannot enter into the kingdom. Many, many profess to be Christians today, but they've never been born again. They've never had that born again experience in Christ. Come on, somebody. But yet they're wearing the name, they're wearing the title. And they bring condemnation on God's people. Uh -huh. Judas had the best pastor. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. He had the best leader. He had the best advisor. He had the best counselor. And he still failed. Uh -huh. The problem's not always the leadership or the church you go to. If your attitude or character doesn't change, if your heart is not transformed, you will always be the same unless you are born again. Amen. Thank you. Now we can change <laughs> some little things about ourselves. Uh -huh. <coughs> we can change some things on our own sometimes. You will never be and you will never become what God wants you to be or what God wants you to become unless you've been born again. Amen. Amen. You see, we don't get up, we don't get up one day, we don't wake up one day and say, huh? I'm gonna change the things in my life. I'm gonna start going to church and I'm gonna start serving the Lord because when I die I'm gonna go to heaven. It don't work. Because the Bible says that we have to be drawn by the Spirit of God yes. to an altar of repentance uh -huh. salvation. Yeah. Matter of fact, the Bible says when we are born again, old things pass away yes. and all things become new. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. And that brings us to the third thing. Uh -huh. The choice he made. You see, Satan made a relentless assault on Judas' soul. Uh -huh. As he makes a relentless assault on everyone who chooses to follow Christ. We read about Satan's attack on Judas. Matter of fact, in, in John uh, chapter 13 and, and verse 2, the Bible says, After supper, the devil had put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray Jesus. 
Satan entered in. And then it says over in verse 21 of that same chapter, it says, When Jesus had thus said, He was troubled in His spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray Me. Amen. And then the disciples began to wonder who it was. Even, even when Jesus point blank told them, they still didn't see what it was that Jesus wanted them to see. Listen to the conversation. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of who he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. It was John. And Simon Peter therefore begged to him that he should ask, who should it be of him whom he spake? They wanted to know who's going to betray him. Uh -huh. But didn't nobody want to ask, so they got Tom <coughs> to ask. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. He didn't lie on Jesus' breast, says unto him, Lord, <coughs> who is it? And Jesus said, but it said, He it is to whom I shall give a salt when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the salt, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. That should have been plain as day. Amen. We don't always get what's plain as day. We don't always see what's written in black and white on God's Word. They missed it then. We got many that missed it now. Verse 27. And after the salt, Satan entered into him. And then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. The Bible clear statements about Satan's activity have led some to say, Oh, poor Jesus, he didn't have a chance. But this evaluation overlooks the fact that Judas opened the door to Satan. Judas had been stealing from the money bag. And when he kept this sin secret, Satan entered into him. He made a deal with the chief priest and then sat down at our Lord's table with known sins he would not confess. And Satan entered in even further into his life. Amen. We come into the house of God. We sit down at the Lord's table. The Lord prepares the table before us in the presence of our enemy. We come in and we sit down at the Lord's table. And many times we got sin in our lives, but we want our pride will not allow us to come down to an altar and confess that sin. And you know what happened? We go further and further and further away from the Lord. Unconfessed sin always opens the door to Satan's power. Mm -hmm. Satan doesn't gain a foothold in the lives of people who are walking in Jesus. He only gains access when we open the door through darkness and the works of the flesh. Satan cannot approach a child of God unless that person has first opened the door for him. Amen. You want to know why? Because we're under the blood. Amen. You get out from under the blood when you get into sin. You get out from under the covering when you get into sin. You get out from under the covering when you refuse to repent. You get out from under the covering when you refuse to ask for forgiveness. Satan cannot approach a child of God unless that person has first opened the door for him. And regardless of what people think, Satan does not force himself in. He cannot force himself into your life. He is led in through an open door. Amen. Who opens the door? <coughs> Ephesians 4.27 says, Give no place to the devil. Amen. The Bible is speaking to us. Give no place to the devil. Amen. When you give place to the devil, you open the door. Amen. Judas gave place to the devil when he started stealing Amen. out of the money bag. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. 
And that brings us to number four. First close. Amen. The outcome he embraced. Judas went out into the darkness that he had chosen. You see, when you get close to Jesus, one of two things will happen. You listen closely. When you get close to Jesus, one of two things will happen. Either you will become fully His, or you will give Him up altogether. There is no middle ground. Either you're going to be hot, or you're not. The story of Judas reminds us that nothing good can come from giving up. On Jesus. Amen. Anybody remember what happened to Judas? After he betrayed the Lord? He went and hung himself. Yeah. You see, we hang ourselves when we choose not to follow the Lord. When, when we refuse to follow Christ, when we refuse to take up our cross daily and follow the Lord, we commit spiritual suicide. Because when, when we choose not to follow the Lord daily, we're going to slowly but surely move further away from Him every day. Till we get to the place where we don't even know who He is. You see, only those who have never known Him can remain indifferent to Him. And for those who receive Him, the only outcome are full devotion or eventual opposition. You can't serve two masters. We want to call ourselves a Christian, but we want to be our own God. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Wow, Patrick. Mm. You sure hit this hard this morning. Because I love you, brother. And I see. I see happening in the church today what the Bible says is going to happen in the last day. Right before Jesus comes, He said there's going to be a falling away. There's so many churches today that are so far away from Jesus. But they fill the house every Sunday morning. You walk in and you don't know if you're walking into a church or a nightclub. Because from the looks of it, you can't tell the difference. You can't tell from the way people are dressed. You can't tell from the lights and the smoke and the darkness. And I know, I know I'm, I'm probably going to make some preachers mad today. I'm going to make some pastors mad today if they happen to, to watch this video, this message on Facebook. Look, oh, there's nothing wrong there. But listen, God is light. Why do we need to turn the light out to worship God? Amen. 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 Let me move on because I'm trying to close for the second time. Amen. For those of us who receive Him, for those of us who know Him, the only outcome is full devotion. Amen. Because if we're not fully devoted, eventually we're going to be in opposition to Him. And you know what? Every day, every day we're moving in one direction or the other. Amen. 
Every day we're either moving closer toward Him or we're moving further away from Him. There is no in between. There is no middle ground. So God sent us a warning in the Scriptures. In an age when many are falling away and abandoning the faith they once professed, the story of Judas warns us to guard our hearts lest we also so I ask you this morning, which direction are you? Are you moving closer to me or further away? Charging this morning. Guard your heart. Don't give the devil any place. Don't give him an open door. Amen. Amen. There are many today, many today, sitting in what they call churches. That don't even believe that this is relevant. outdated. It's when we decide we know more than God does. It's when we decide God didn't mean what He said and He didn't say what He meant. Well, you must be calling Him a liar. Let God be true. Yeah. Somebody give a little praise. Yeah.